Now this is something I wanted to show you. This is the infamous Bronco welded ring gear. And this is where they weld the ring gear. They friction weld the ring gear onto the differential. So if you want to upgrade your ring and pinion, you need to replace the differential too. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because, well, if you've got somebody tearing the ring and pinion apart for you to replace them, you might as well add a tractionating device. Now this is the ARB Bronco. So we're going to be installing ARB air lockers in it for them. Earlier this spring, we had the chance to work on the Race Red ARB Bronco. This Outer Banks model Bronco is one of ARB's demo Broncos traveling around to different events to show off their range of products for Ford's new 4x4. Now the 2022 Easter Jeep Safari was rapidly approaching and we only had a few days to install the ARB air lockers front and rear in this Bronco so they could make that event. So unfortunately, we can't bring you a full play-by-play. -play. However, we do have some highlights for you, so sit back and enjoy. The first step of any install is the disassembly, so on we go. Now, although we're not doing a full step-by-step -step installation in this video, we do want to go over a few things you want to watch out for. So the first thing is our box. We want to take a look at the part number and we want to double check that with our application. Make sure it's right. This is an RD245. This fits the Wrangler JL, the Gladiator JT, and the new Bronco. Then we also want to take a note of the serial number this down here right above the barcode and that's the serial number of the locker inside the box. So now we can open our box. And inside we've got our parts box that has our instructions and all the parts necessary. We've got this piece here. And now here's our air locker. And then if we dig even farther down in the box, Pull the lower cardboard out, and this is where you'll find the airline. The airline's tucked down in the bottom of the box. Now I like to take a knife and cut this label off, and I'll throw that in my records. That way I have the part number, I know what it is, and it also has this serial number. So if there's any sort of production change or anything like that, A or B will be able to tell from the serial number what locker I have and what generation it is. All right, now we're gonna grab our air locker bag. Let's open that up. And you'll see that there's a coating in here. This is to keep the air locker from rusting. So we can pull that out. And we wanna wipe that off. So a little bit of brake clean on the outside. And give it a good wipe down. Now we wanna look at the bottom of the locker, make sure that the part number matches and that serial number matches. So this is the RD245 and that serial number does match the serial number on our tag. Now, fun fact about the serial number, you can decode this to see exactly when this air locker was built. The first two digits are the year, the second two digits the month, and the remaining digits are the place on the assembly line. So this is the 1732nd locker built in the 10th month of 2021. All right, now we can grab our parts box. Let's open that up. Here we got our instructions. And though we recommend that you have your air locker installed by a shop that knows differentials and has done air locker installations before, you can tackle it yourself. The instructions are very comprehensive, but it's one of those things. This is an investment. So you wanna make sure it's done right. So our first bag here is our fittings. This is all the fittings to go through the housing and up to our solenoid. This is that air over electric solenoid. Here's the seal housing or air collar. Then we've got our on-off switch. 
And this is our seal collar retaining bracket. Then we've got our shim kits for the installation and they are different sizes because the new Adventech Dana 44 has two different size bearings depending on whether it's the right side or left side bearing. Then you have your zip ties and this is to zip tie your airline all the way up from your air locker uh, along the frame or how, wherever you're going to put them. These are going to go up the frame to where your compressor's at. And then last, we've got our two O-rings. And these two O-rings are gonna sit inside the seal housing. Be careful to pull our line out and unwrap our seal housing. And that's got that same corrosion coating on it. So we're just gonna throw some brake clean on it. You definitely wanna make sure you get all the film from inside those O-rings. So I usually keep an old toothbrush in my toolbox. And that's just to get down in there and clean all that stuff from those O-ring grooves. And now we can open up our O-rings and pull them out. And we wanna use a little gear oil on them. Now you wanna look at these O-rings real close. They're not round, they're a clover cut or a square cut O-ring. And you wanna make sure it's not twisted when you install it, that it's nice and straight Then it's time to get the ring gear ready for the air locker. Get a pan and some brake clean and go at it. Cleaning off any oil, grit, grime, or whatever from that new ring gear. You also wanna make sure to clean out the ring gear bolt holes too. And then we're gonna make sure the back of the ring gear is flat. We use a large diamond sharpening stone across the back of the ring gear in wide flat sweeps to make sure there are no high spots or burrs left over from the manufacturing process. Now, if your ring gear bolts are oily too, make sure that you give them a good bath. Any residual oil can cause your Loctite not to set up properly, which could lead to loose ring gear bolts. Set the ring gear face down, drop in the air locker, lift the ring gear up into position, and then insert a few ring gear bolts and thread them in as far as you can. And that'll help align the bolt holes. We're then gonna flip it over and use a rubber mallet to seat the ring gear all the way down against the flange. Then place a few drops of red Loctite on the threads of the ring gear bolt holes and let it flow down those threads. Then in go the ring gear bolts and they get torqued to 120 foot pounds. We then went through the setup procedure for the ring and pinion. Now we're not gonna get into that in depth in this video. If that's something you'd like to see in a future video, well, leave that in the comment section below. With the gear set up and a proper pattern showing, it's time to route the copper airline over and then install the bulkhead fittings through the housing. We then reassembled the axle then cleaned up and reinstalled that heavy duty ARB rear diff cover. To finish the rear axle, we filled it with high performance gear lube from Redline Oil. After connecting the airline to the bulkhead fitting, we then routed that airline up the frame to the compressor and installed the solenoid and then hooked up that airline. We also installed an air locker in the front Dana 30 M190 Adventech IFS axle housing. Now this is the first air locker being installed in a Bronco front IFS. So there's a lot of figuring of things out and a lot of note taking and just not enough time to properly shoot it. Now timing is everything. And we were just backing the red Bronco out of the shop to take it for a test drive when the ARB crew showed up in their blue Bronco to check on the progress. They jumped in with us and off on a test drive we went. Now one of the nice things about the test drive was we got a chance to feel the ride quality of the new Old Man Emu Bronco suspension. And in keeping with true OME tradition, this new suspension rode really nice. Then it was handshakes and wishes of safe travels and the ARB Broncos were out of here on their way for a proper shakedown in Moab, Utah. Thanks for joining us today and we hope that you enjoyed our quick recap of installing air lockers into the ARB Bronco.